So the first book was about this guy, what happens and how he gets here to this position where he's this, and the whole thing's happening actually in prison. And the second book is when these guys get out and they go on, to, they're going to do this big thing to help the world. They're going to do it through technology. And all the big tech oligarchs who are, you know, like they have different names in the book, but they're trying to stop this because these guys are creating a, they're creating a positive AI, which is a bit yeah. different than maybe the one that's, it's on the table right now. And so they're getting a big, a lot of pushback in the second book. And in the third book, I'm, you know, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least a major shift in awareness for many people from the use of what these guys are put together and all kinds of drama with others that are literally willing to kill to make it stop, which is quite on track with where things could happen if this man truly did live in our world, Danny Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few technical difficulties and I just want to thank you so much in advance for persevering through those Today on The Beautiful Side of Grief, we have a guest, Michael McGuinness, who is wanting you to learn more about yourself. And he's doing this through his Essential Revolution series of books, for which he received the Literary Titan Gold Book Award for his first book in the series, The Essential Revolution. This is a departure from the normal conversations that I have, though I feel it's an important one as many people going through profound grief experience that sea change moment where they start to question, what is my life? Where is it heading? And what's my purpose for being here? And so many more questions like that. And maybe you yourself are on a journey of awakening like I am. So Michael dedicates his life to the awakening of humanity on a global level. And he does this through extensive self-study and first-hand experience. He's also been gifted to serve as a channel for the words the world needs to hear most at the crucial point in history, which is right now, because really our world is in chaos right now. So if you are left wondering what the purpose of your life is, I welcome you to this conversation with Mike as we delve into what this all means a bit more. So welcome, Mike. Great to have you with me today. Hi, thank you for having me. It's an honor. So, Mike, mm -hmm. first up, I'd love for you to give us a background of what your life was like that led you on this path of wanting to empower people to step into the highest versions of themselves. Well, I've had a pretty wild life of ups and downs ever since I was, I'd say, five years old, non ugly, all of it. it gone experiences with chasing things and trying to have more, trying to have things that you want in the physicality, which nothing wrong with, uh, you know, I'm glad I went through that whole stage and when certain things have left me or whether it's people or people past or whatever it is, or just other downfalls, there's, I've always hit like a bottom and then, um, kind of come back in some way. But I had what we would say is a pretty big awakening about 10 years ago. And that led me to, you know, kind of want to spread the word, so to speak, and just be at service in that way. And yeah, it, it was just a crazy life before that. It's all, it's, I can tell you, it's, it's wild. I'm a completely different person now. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that completely. Was it one particular thing that happened in your life that really set you on this path of awakening and wanting to share the word? It, it's funny because uh, consci con when I hit the conscious level of knowing what was going on would have been 10 years ago through a visionary experience. And then I started having several of those. Um, but before that, I'd also had some experiences with the course that I took, but I didn't see it as something that was spiritual in nature. I saw it more transformational, changed my life. I stopped blaming others and took responsibility for everything that had happened. That was a course that I did. And then there was a moment where I had a lot of stuff and I still wasn't fulfilled and um, had ended up listening to a book, just just hearing about this guy, Eckhart Tolle, and listening to his work and so I had a transformational experience there as well, but I would say like the big, like knowing that something was happening that was called spiritual was, yeah, about 10 years ago. That's when the big, big, big one happened. Eckhart Tolle, oh gosh, I just love the work he does. And I'm also aware that when we start to move into that level of consciousness, it's just like everything in our life we start to question. And it's certainly, I was like blaming a lot of things and people in my life too, you know, the victim mentality that you have. 
And that's so dangerous for us. And a lot of people are not even conscious that they're even doing that, are they? No, and it's a big point in my books, getting out of the victimhood mindset. And like right now, we're in a world where that has been cranked up to seems to be the maximum. It's so crazy how everybody's a victim. If they're not a victim, they're pushing victimhood for another. And with this parasitic woke triangle thing, and my book really dives into that. And it's an interesting, it's an interesting thing to think about because in a way, something's happened to all of us and we are victims to something, but it's how you perceive it and what you do with it later in life when you're ready to move away from that. And like you said, so many people don't even know it. I think they're just not con conscious of it yet in some lifetime, maybe this one, maybe another one, they, they will, because we're all going to go back home. We're all going to have this big, these big awakenings, every human being. And I think through our struggle and through even the, these people who are on this victimhood train, they're still moving towards their awakening, but it's not a conscious way. It's, it's happening in through the darkness. It's very interesting. Yeah, we have a lot of those tough times and challenges as the mechanism for growth. Just That's to, right. Yeah. And so yeah. unless we're in that, uh, probably that mindset where you are recognizing that this is an opportunity for growth, then you won't reach that stage of awakening, will you? So Not conscious awake, like where you realize, oh, there's another way. And then you start working on it consciously. Otherwise, you're inching along unconsciously through struggle and strife and challenge, you know, and, and, um, repeating, you know, kind of, yeah, existing in a lower vibrational frequency and not knowing that there was something else. But I think once somebody gets up, I shouldn't say once, but at least for myself, once I got a taste of, oh, there's another way to do this. Oh, there's another way to perceive my, how life works or my situation or the situation of even others. Cause that's also important is what do you do with when you see how others are affected and hurting and whatnot, there's, you've got to do something with that. Otherwise you're going to either be pissed off or sad or hurt inside. In my book, the hero, Dimitri, he, he says three words, it's their experience. So we're able to let others have their experience, right? And not be like, oh, poor them. And now that, and of course, you know, I mean, still compassion and your heart's open. And if there's a way to get in there and help some way that really makes sense, you, you do it if it feels right. But it's also a way to also just recognize that everybody is not there to have an experience. Even if it's somebody who has been in a situation, we can even call it a repressed situation because it does exist. And can we shift? Yes. And I think that happens through, through a global awakening. All these things will be handled. Um, pointing the finger outward constantly is not the way to get there, though. And that's what we have a lot of in the world right now. These well, crazies, if I can say that. <laughs> and I think you hit on it <laughs> earlier when you said when you start taking responsibility for your own actions, for your own choices, instead of blaming others. And that's when I felt the real shift start to change for me in my life is like, okay, actually, I own this, you know, it's I'm responsible for the choices I make. And if I make a bad choice, it's nobody else's problem. Also, I was just talking to somebody earlier about that. We all operate at our level of awareness. And so some mm -hmm. people are operating at a lo really low level of awareness where they cannot see past that. And so actually, it's like you say, who owns that? And if that's the experience, then we probably just need to allow them to experience that yeah. in the way they are rather than placing our, or what's the right word here, or what's the right phrase, uh, imposing our expectations upon them and our belief systems because they have to come into that in their own time. So let's talk about your book because you've written this book as a fiction, a fictional book. So rather than one from the perspective of your awakening. Why did you do that? To be honest, the book came through me and the idea and the story, and it wasn't something that I was never going to write anything in my life. I'm not a reader. I'm not a writer. I was never a writer. I never. And this thing just hit me one day and says, this is what's going to happen. You're going to write this novel. Here's what it's going to I swear to God, it was like that. And I'm like, really? I don't know how to write. And they go check it out. And I did it. And and it worked and it's crazy and it's there's very little effort being put out other than the fact that you have to sit down 
for long periods of the time. And it just came through that way as fiction. And I like the way it came through because I see why it came through that way is because in a way, if you think about the imagination, it's where all creation comes from. So through the imagination, as somebody's reading this fictional novel and they're seeing, they're witnessing the awakening of humanity and this person who helps bring it through and all this, and it's, we get to imagine what it would be like. And so we're setting it up already for as a blueprint. So I think that's really why I'm going to say it pushed it through me like that. That's the best way I'll say it. And it works. Like I said, it, it I could write both. I could write nonfiction. I, I can see it, but I like the, the journey into the hero's journey and all that stuff. <laughs> I think it makes it a little bit easier for people to read too when it's a story. Like they pick it up and they look at it in a different way. And then as they're reading it, they're going, oh my gosh. That could apply to me. <laughs> that, that's what happens. Yeah. yeah. I see what you're doing there because that's being described as hiding the spinach and the mashed potato. That's right. Somebody said that to me. Yeah, I don't know. yeah that's true. <laughs> it's hiding the spinach and the mashed That's exactly yeah, what's happening. So you're getting the messages across. I think they're reading the story, but actually you're yeah. getting some very important messages across. Now, going from not writing it all to writing a book like this, and in fact, writing a series of books. So do you channel? Is that how they come down through? Is that how it all happens? And can you explain to us how you channel? Yeah, I would say that it is a channeling. I would not say that I'm special. I think that everybody, once they've cleared up some of the cobwebs and things within them, they're all, we're all some kind of a channel and the divine has its way of working through us if we'll allow it and we get to that place. And like you said, not everybody's gotten there and that's okay too. And everybody's on their path. But again, like, I, yeah, I don't claim to be somebody who his eyes go back in their head and somebody else speaks through me. It doesn't really work that way. It's just, I get clean and clear, meaning I'll use sauna steam, hot, cold, and get very clear. And then the things just come to me and I literally sit down and it only happens in the morning, pretty much early, really early and start it at the latest five and go till I eat. And once I eat, it stops. And usually that can, I can go till midday and just straight on. And when it, when I'm, when it's turned on and I can tell when it's time to write another book and it's coming to that time, I think in December is when it's going to happen. So that'll be book three. And yeah, it's quite phenomenal because what happens is I just basically sit there and watch a movie in my head of what's happening with all these characters. And I don't make many decisions, to be honest. It's just, they're all, it's, I'm watching it and it's happening that way. It's, it's pretty strange. Pretty cool. <laughs> no, it's, very it's cool. pretty cool. And I look, me, myself, I just uh, was talking to somebody the other day and uh, yeah, and then my whole voice changed. And I had this like, uh, and I was listening. I was looking at myself going, this is not me talking. <laughs> so I had that experience myself. It was really quite bizarre. And I, it was just this dream of information that came through that obviously the, this person needed to know. Actually, it was a couple of people listening, but one in particular needed to know. And it just came through me. And I think. I've heard it described as a tool. So it's not a gift as such, it's a tool and a skill. Like anything, the more we sharpen our awareness and our spirituality and allow ourselves to be open, the more likely we are to start receiving these types of things happening to us. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I would agree 100%. Do you start to like I said, just cleaning things up in your life and your mind and getting a, getting very present rather than being non-present, just being still present with the moment right now. And yeah. Do you meditate? I do, I do not very often. I like it when I do, but it, I guess I don't like it enough to continue. Um, I have had times in my life where I've meditated quite a bit. I would say that I'm in another straight, kind of a different state of meditation sometimes, like a open eye going through life, just being very present in the moment right now, not worrying about what's coming, not worrying about what happened or how bad it was, how great. And it's just now. And I think that's a big thing for people to get is, and it's not easy until you realize that it's actually harder to be 
not present. And that's a weird thing to say because most people are so used to what we were. We're all so programmed to live in the future and I'll be happy when. And it's usually about their survival or their money or whatever, or getting married or whatever it is. And, and we get stuck in that loop and then it, it, it seems to destroy creativity completely because you, where can you go when you're not here? So it all happens in the now. And like I said, it's like, it's when you discover, oh my God, it's easier to live. It's so much easier to live this way than be non-present. So we go from 90 or 90% present instead of 90% not present and and 10%, you know what I mean? And we switch it around and then all of a sudden life becomes a lot easier. How does someone get there? I, I think it's just, it takes the time it takes. And then one day it happens and it happens to people. I, I have very many friends that, that are, we're on the same path and very similar path. And we, we get to this place where we're present. And then we have our moments, of course, where we're just in a world right now. Who can't be worried about with what's going on? <laughs> you know, like, what is, the, what's it going to be like a year from now, five years from now? And that happens, but we just have to remind ourselves, okay, but right at this moment, everything's great, you know? Yeah. And we have yeah. to worry about ourselves in this moment, what we're doing here and now, because I believe what we're putting out is affecting others around us. So if we can be in the here and now and we can be operating at a really good vibration, a good level, then that's what people are going to feel of us. And then that could ultimately just alter their whole journey. Very subtle, isn't it? In that let's talk victimhood, Mike. So mm. if somebody is in that state of mind or living that, how do they start to get themselves out of that blame game and to start to take responsibility for themselves? And I know that this happens a lot of, with people in grief, you know, where they feel the guilt. And, uh, and I feel that a lot of people suppress grief. And I'm not talking grief just of the loss of a loved one, but grief can happen in so many different forms. It can be the loss of the life you thought you would have, or the house you thought you would have, or the job, or it can happen in any different area. So if somebody is in that now listening, what would you recommend to them? If they're in the victim mindset at the moment, like, look what's happened to me in my life, look what, or what, whatever somebody did, a cruel world, father, uncle, business partner, wife, ex-wife, ex-husband, whatever it is. It, I think it would start by you getting, the person getting very clear that your remaining in that state is what you, we could call hell on earth. Because it, I always let people know it's for, to be very clear about something that the, whatever the person did, what they did, or, or if the person did or the cruel world or whatever, they're not thinking about this. You're the only one that's suffering. You're there, you know, and, and you're maladone over. It's like, a, and you're, ball, you're the one that you yeah, start there. And then what I would say is when we say responsible for themselves, I would say, I would refine that a little bit and say, we ask people to be responsible for their perception of what happened. What are they saying about it in here? Because we all talk to ourselves all day long. That's all we do. We just blah, 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 blah. We're talking inside here. And what are they saying about what happened? Because if they can chip their perception and realize that whatever, let's say it was a, something that another person did to them, then a, a way to live is to say, wow, that person was doing the best that they could with the limited tools that they had in their tool chest at the time that they did it. That's one perception. And then the other perception is only the one they're living in, which is that so-and-so effing, and I hate them. And that's a way to live too. One is hell. One is going to get you towards heaven. Okay. <laughs> heaven on earth. And, and then I would say if it's a, a cruel world that's done, like they, their plans didn't go the way they wanted. It's the same thing, except for the perception might shift to everything is happening exactly like it's supposed to. There's a gift for me in all that's happened, including the way that I've been speaking to myself about how my, my life's gone down and what's happened. So I can actually turn that whole thing around and, you know, make the, the lemonade out of the lemons, if you want to say it that way. And, and it can happen just through the perception of going, okay, it's supposed to be like this. How do we know that it's supposed to be like this? Because it's just like it is. It's so simple. 
to walking around going, oh, this didn't happen. That means you're in the resistance to what is. That means you're in the world of shoulds and shouldn'ts. That is, I don't even, those words don't even exist in my vocabulary. And I urge people to stop saying them. Should you, should I, should have done this. He should have, he should have done that. that, that, that. No, I shouldn't have. That does, that needs to go away. Just like the words like, I can't. We don't do that. Yes. You can. Everything is possible. And it, it's, it's going to happen through an experience where people go, oh, wow, I see it now. And they learn something from that experience. Like in your case, I mean, you've had a, a horrific, there's just, I don't think there's anything bigger or, or, or more heavy in the world that can happen, will happen with you and your family member, your daughter. And you have found the light through that. I mean, am I not am I right? Absolutely. So, yeah. If you can do that through the absolute worst thing that can happen to somebody, then you don't, we don't think that the person that got gypped by a business deal or the, someone cheated on them or whatever, it's all possible if something that big could happen, you know? My life is better now than it's ever been. And that is all because my daughter has taken me on this incredible journey. In the 18 years, she was with me. And then since she has led me on this path of being able to see this from a completely different perspective and not to worry about what anybody else thinks about it and not to think about how I should be doing it. There's that word. But to just do it how it felt and feels right for me to be doing. And yeah. like you were talking earlier about being in the here and now, during COVID and lockdown, I used to go for walks where we lived because we lived like semi-rural. So I had all this beautiful countryside just to walk in by myself. And I used to walk and I used to notice the trees and the sky and every single day it would be different. But I would notice in that moment what was there. And from there, I kid you not, I just kept opening up. It was like I was surrounded by this beautiful nature. I allowed myself just to acknowledge whatever was coming into my head and let it be. And I wouldn't go, oh, you're stupid for thinking that. I'll go, maybe why am I thinking that? And just, and is it important to me now in my life? Is it? If it's not, okay, I'll see you later. That's right. And that's what I think you're talking about. It's just allowing ourselves when we're living in the here and now in the present to fully embrace what is happening for us rather than to us. That's right. And we call it finding the gift in, in, in the book. That's what the character calls it. And you found the gift in the passing of a loved one. And that is, it just, it's no more, the, the evidence is so big right there. And if, if someone can do that, then I trust me, you can do that with every look. You know, every time something happens in my life, I just got over, a, you know, a relationship just ended and I have to always go, okay, where's the gift in this? What am I supposed to get out of this? If this is the path to awakening is when you start to ask it, like you, you just know that there's something there. Okay. Yeah. I know this happened for you. You move into this place of it didn't happen to me. It happened for me, all things, everything. And when you're there, that's the biggest gift of all that you can give to yourself is to really know that and to start really searching for that gift and finding it. You've got to hit a bottom, you hit a bottom and you come back up from it. And we're all these things that are happening to us are all just, I think, things that we're going through on our way back home to, you know, oneness source, whatever you want to call it, what you were before you came into the physical incarnation and found out there was an other than me and there was a, this separation and all the stuff that didn't exist before that. We're all just finding our way back home, but in, in the body. And that's the game I think we came here to play. As a matter of fact, I know that's the game we came here to play. Probably one of my hardest things to do was to learn to trust and surrender. I mm. probably was my own biggest roadblock in that I thought I needed to know how things would be. I needed to map them out. I needed to know what the end result was. Actually, learning to just trust, like to go with what my body was telling me, and a good example of this was that I was in a workplace and I really enjoyed working there. So don't get me wrong, 
But the thing with me was that I've, I'm multi-skilled. And once people start to know that, I just end up getting more and more things to do. <laughs> and I was finding less and less time to do my podcast. And so it went from weekly to fortnightly. The universe cracked on it and said, <laughs> you're moving away from what your passion is. So you're good at doing all that other stuff, but you need to actually walk away from that. So I had to make this decision. And it was an easy decision to make. Don't I didn't even angst over it. I just went and resigned, and I felt so calm about doing that because I just knew, I realized when I was meditating, that actually what was going on, that I was moving further and further away from what I love to do, which is talking to people like yourself, finding out what is out there, how people can go from where they are to where they want to be, that sort of things. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so how does somebody know that they're ready for this type of change that we're talking about? Were there signs for you that were leading you along that journey? I, I think it, for me, I would say it's something that happened to me. It literally felt like I believe that everything is somehow divinely orchestrated. We can't put it into words, can't figure it out. It's just that it's so beyond our little pea brain knowledge and knowing at this moment. But it, like you said, trust and faith. I think that's what people would maybe move into. But I would, yeah, the bigger question is, yeah, like how do people know when they're ready or how they, like in, in my book, the character says they're getting ready, they're getting people ready to be ready. <laughs> Because we always say we so we so we so much want another to wake up, and we're like, oh, hey, come and do this program, or and and it's, we get kind of crazy about that. And then at some point, you got to realize, hey, everybody's on their path, and you still offer it. Be like that. You got the lantern there in the darkness. If they ever need it, here they come. Okay. And yeah, I think that with what's going on in the world right now, I don't know if you noticed, but everybody's going through something more than we used to, right? It's, a, it's like we're in a pressure, it's like a thing that's just, and what that's doing is it's causing the effect of awakening. Awakening, maybe some people are going to awaken first to what's really going on behind the curtain of Oz. That's a big part of what we would call awakening. Oh, wait a minute. There's some players out there that are doing this and that and this. Okay. I see this. Interesting. Not to get all crazy about it. I mean, maybe you got it. Some, some people got to get, I had to get a little nutty for a while, but it doesn't help. But the one part of it is to, to awaken to that. But the bigger awakening that happened is your spiritual awakening. And I think that all of the stuff that's happening is, is pushing us all towards this bottom to where we can only come up or sink down further. And we see a lot of that sinking down further. And it's happening more and more every day we keep seeing it. And I think we're, we're getting ready for a big, giant global awakening. I don't know when, because we all believe in time. But I, I, I do know that's coming at some point in humanity. I, it could be 600 years from now. It could be six. I have no idea. Or 60. And I think that's what the pandemic was about, closing down the whole entire world. Yeah. And it forced people out of their comfort zones. It forced them to recognize, am I in a good relationship or not such a good relationship? Do I like my work? <laughs> or am I quite happy working from home now? I quite like this. <laughs> Autonomy yeah. of being responsible for how I do my work during my work day and things like that. And that's sometimes the first time people have ever had the opportunity to experience those types of things and spend time with their family. Mm. Yeah. So, right. yeah, I think that was the start of it. So, what's your view on why we're here on oh, no, earth, Mike? That's <laughs> a big mm. question. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of theories on that, but I believe that the divine creator, which is something that we cannot even wrap our heads around, we don't, shouldn't even try, got so bored <laughs> with being pure light, <laughs> literally just like, you know, there's, and it wanted to experience itself. And so there's this, so it is having its experience through us. And if we look at it as we all believe in this thing that's called separation, like that I'm here and you're over there. And I, I would say that is one big giant illusion. Maya, they would call it, the Vedics would call it. But we, if we're to really, if I was to really say what I believe is happening is that it is happening, it's experience through us and it's experience itself 
coming back home to itself. So it gets to go through all these experiences. None of them are good, bad, or wrong until we say that they are. I don't believe that there's, there's this thing that it, belie- it, it there's no judgment. No, it is just, here you go, free will, let the cre- its creation play out. It's part of creativ- its creativity and what is it going to create. And eventually everybody comes home, always. And I would, and, and I, the, the character in the book says, the drive-by shooter is in his perfection. It's a hell of a thing to say, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah it's a, it, but as crazy as that sounds, it is true. That person has to go through what they're doing at that moment. And as low as that is, and you and me, we're not going to be a part of that crap and we're going to get in the middle of it, try to stop whatever we can. But still, all of it has to happen like it is so that we can go through this karmic experience of returning back to uh, or getting t- towards us, uh, getting to ascension, we can call it, right? Full enlightenment, whatever, become the Buddha, Christ, whatever it's going, however we're going to say something that is so hard to explain. It's so big. It's so big. Yeah, it is because it's about op- opening yourself up and you, s- I don't know, start to crack a little bit and you start to have glimpses of stuff and that starts to change the way you think a little bit and then you crack open. <laughs> <laughs> and like you say, <laughs> yeah. you start to see all this information and all this other stuff that was really outside your realms of thinking. And I think what it is, just allowing yourself to be open, it doesn't matter if you were brought up in a strict religion that had those beliefs. If you feel yourself that you're ready to explore, and look at something else, that's a good thing. Be guided by that and, you know, allow yourself to be gentle on yourself because what you're having to do is often go against the beliefs that you've been brought up with. And that can be very hard because sometimes that means losing family members if you're not all on the same page. But I think it's about going on that journey. So let's talk about your book. What is your book about? What's the journey there? What is the reader going to get out of this? The book is, the, the second book is taking place in real time. Like right now, all the thing that's happening oh. in our world, the invitation. Yeah. Yep. With everything that's happening, pretty much the war wasn't, the new, the newest war wasn't in there, um, but does mention that war is, in the first book, we mentioned that war is going to be coming if we don't do something about this soon. The book is about a journey of several different people who are living their lives in very different ways. And they meet someone who comes into our world to change everything. And there's this key group of people that get to know him and end up helping him. It's just kind of like a savior story, but more for modern times. And it's just fiction. It's the fun. Hero's but <laughs> the hero's journey, but the actual, the journey is towards the helping of, of a global awakening and there's all kinds of characters that want to stop this from happening so there's a lot of drama and action and it's a heavy book it's it's a page turner i mean you definitely you know a lot of twists and turns and uh, yeah and it, the thing i think that what you said what readers are going to get out of it like with all allegorical fiction it it puts you in the place in my books anyways where you're the characters are literally speaking to you. So you're having the experience that they're going through and they're doubting this awakening thing, just like one would doubt what this guy said, telling, oh, I don't believe in that. And then we inch along with them as they go, oh, wow. And so the reader is getting the oh, wow as well. So it's like you can't, you can't um, escape. It's <laughs> your, your awakening when you're reading this book. So you will get something out of it. And doesn't matter where you're at on this journey. You could be brand new and not even know what the stuff you and I are talking about means, or you could be very far along and you're still going to get some major stuff. Plus it's, it's quite the enjoyable read. I have to say myself, again, I can feel like I can say these things because I don't feel like I'm so responsible for writing it. <laughs> Honestly, I love, like, love, I love that. I, I could hear that as you were saying it, like I enjoy it yeah. just as much. And yeah, it's not touting tell, your own trumpet because really you've just been the instrument, haven't you? Yeah, that's the, right. The, the conduit yeah. getting this information out. Yeah, that that's great. So, what's your third book going to be about? So, the invitation is about what's here and now, what's happening here and now. What's your third book? So, the first book was about this guy, what happens and how he gets here to this position yeah. where he's this, and the whole thing's happening actually in prison. 
And the second book is when these guys get out and they go on, to, they're going to do this big thing to help the world. They're going to do it through technology. And all the big tech oligarchs who are, you know, like they have different names in the book, but they're trying to stop this because these guys are creating a, they're creating a positive AI, which is a bit yeah. different than maybe the one that's, it's on the table right now. And so they're getting a big, a lot of pushback in the second book. And in the third book, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm pretty sure there's going to be at least a major shift in awareness for many people from the use of what these guys are put together and all kinds of drama with others that are literally willing to kill to make it stop, which is quite on track with where things could happen if this man truly did live in our world, a guy named Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to read it. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't have the opportunity. <laughs> Normally, I try and read um, people's books before I interview them, so that uh, I can speak. You can have me on again if you after you read it if you like it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, because you know I'm just right into that whole thing, and I think, oh gee, I just had this wonderful question just pop into my head, and now it's just gone again. So let me just think for a moment. Might just edit that wee part out. Where we are here and now, so we've got the war that happened in Ukraine, we've now got the war in Israel, we've now got countries all around the world polarizing themselves. How do we start to get a different message out there? How do we start to get people to see that there is a, another way rather than condemning each other and being accepting of where everybody's at and their belief systems and not buying into the consumerism of having to have the house, the car, the right job and just get more and more money. So your thought? If you look at the stuff that's happening with all the people who are taking sides, it's so obvious that it is so dense. The, and the darkness that is within everyone who's doing this, who's a part of it in any way. And, and in, in a lot of the darkness, it's just also misunderstanding for a lot of people. Like they literally believe we have, there has to be a fight. There has to be a, a response and there has to be this and they have to kill, kill, kill. And it's because we're so used to that. I mean, it's not our nature to kill each other. It, it definitely is not. It, we did not, the, you look at a baby when they come out, it's just pure love, God, that's who we are. And then we learned being here at planet Earth, we learned to become killers and haters and all these things. To get that message out, I don't know. I think each person's going to have to figure that one out to do the best that they can. Sometimes, for I would say the best thing you could do is to be the best example of the best version you can be and do that deep shadow work where you go in and you look at the way you, where did that nasty thought just come from? Why did I just say that to that person? And then go and first of all, find out where it came from, go inside of yourself and go, okay, and do the work. You can look at like Irene Katie. She's a great example of someone to, to, to do that kind of work or Eckhart Tolle, all these masters out there that have these these techniques for really doing this deep shadow work and going in, cleaning yourself up and cleaning your mind patterns and your programming and getting rid of that stuff little by little. It takes time. And it, we all got it in us. We're going to, as long as you're in a body, you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life. Me too, all of us. And, and just become that best version through this process. And that's the best way to change the world. It's, I don't know of another way. Could a, a, a different political leader help? Yeah, uh, we'll have a breather maybe for a few years or something, and maybe they can stop some of this craziness by using some other kind of threat. But ultimately, the division still exists. It might even be more, most likely. And here we are back to the division and, and strife. It's it's a tough one. I think it's we need to also get very clear that we're never going to die, that just the body's going to go, that you're going to live on to some other experience in some way. It is not just warm, warm food and dark blackness for the rest of eternity, you are going to move into some other experience of some kind. And maybe it's in physicality, maybe it's not, we don't know. But I, I know for sure, for a fact, the second this one ends, you're just going to some other new journey. This I know without a doubt. I have no doubt about that. No. Nothing. Me too. Yeah, I agree <laughs> with that. And that makes it easy. That makes you not afraid of dying. You're not afraid of dying. You don't take it so seriously. 
You can also go, okay, these people that are passing through this process that's happening and must happen, I guess, because it is, they are also not really dying. They're going on to this and for some reason, they were in that position to play this role. And I, that's name people. So how can you prove that? And I say, I cannot, I choose to know this. This is a choice of my own creativity to say, okay, no, this is what I'm creating for my world. You can choose that. No, it's a victimhood thing. And everybody's victims to this and that. And we need to kill and fight. Okay. And that's a way to live and move on. You keep doing that. I'm not going to say anything about it, but I'm choosing to know that about reality, about life about what's happening in our world right now. And I think it is about that knowing. We all have that knowing within us and we need to listen to that. And I think if you turn to, whatever you tend to gravitate toward is what you attract more of to you. So if you're choosing that path of, you know, hate and what have you and like that, yeah, you're going to probably feel more of that and that's going to validate the why, why you think that. But then if, you know, gravitate toward love, then that is what you're going to attract more of. And that's how I personally believe that you can be, I liken it to being beacons of light. When the light shines within you, you don't have to convince anybody. People just become attracted to, mm -hmm. well, why is her energy like that? What, what is that about? I just want to be around that person. And then it becomes more of that. So that's my own personal belief. I think that when you do the work from the inside out and you become what you want to become, then you just get more and more of that. And yeah, it's a beautiful way to, to, to look at life. And I've also heard this whole experience that we're having likened to being players in a game, in a video game. Mm -hmm. So we all take on these roles and we all play mm. these roles. and But we can reset the game again and again and try if we, if it doesn't work one way, we can try a different way. And I think that's what we're all doing, isn't it? We're just trying to find our way through <laughs> what, what we're experiencing here. Yeah. Yeah. The hero in the book talks about choosing your role, that it's very important that you choose your role in this galactic showdown, so oh. to speak. <laughs> Are you sure I haven't read this? <laughs> hey, right. And he, what he does is like he, he's gone from where a lot of people are like, oh, I'm terrified, scared to this. Is what he does all the time. So like, let's, let's get, let's do this thing. Let's get into this and let's choose our role. And then that could, like you said, like, you know, just being in the doing that shadow work, that deep inner work and becoming more light frequency, more, higher vibration. It, this is all a frequency specific matter at the end of the day, everything's energy. So yes. as you raise that energy, then others are going to be attracted to your energy and also want to, and theirs will raise as well. So that is as crazy as it sounds. People don't have to go out and do big things or become uh, the president or become a spiritual guide or even authors or any of that. All you've got to do is just do your work, raise your vibration, and also have compassion for those who can't. It is a hell of a thing to hear me. If I heard me speaking 12 years ago or whatever it was, I would say, what an effing idiot this guy is because I wasn't ready to hear this stuff. Yes. Yes. And that's what I always believe. We're always operating from a level of awareness. So yeah, exactly that. It's all vibration. It's all energy. It's all frequency. We're all matter. Yeah, that's it. So you've got behind you the seal of sovereignty. What does that mean? What does that stand for? Standing for that's sovereignty. It. We changed standing. it in the book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, because I had down here standing for sovereignty and then I see behind you seal of sovereignty. So then I thought, have I got that wrong? But what does that stand for? What does that mean? No, you got it right. It's just that it came in on my first book at the last minute. I had this idea for this seal of sovereignty because in my first book, so my first book was written in 2017 and I knew that there were going to be things coming that were going to be going after our sovereignty. I knew for sure. And I don't know how I knew, like actually, I, but I knew things were going to get really weird in the world. And that's why I wrote the book. And that was a big part of it. And so, as we see so many players out there trying to take away freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of movement, a lot of cases, and our hero in the book is 
pushing for sovereignty and people that put that seal on their restaurant window or on their website or whatever in this fictional story, it becomes a way for you to know that you're that you're connected to people who are on the same page, basically. And we want to, in, in, in the book anyways, the idea is that these people stick together and, and work together and we promote those businesses. And the people on the other side, they're maybe doing more of this victim-y thing and ESG and all the stuff that we're not really so fond of and don't become a part of the, the, the they don't put the seal on their stuff. So we, people get the idea of who's doing what and who to support that's on the same journey, we'll say on the same journey. Or in alignment. Yeah. Or in alignment. Okay. Yeah. 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 That sounds good. Yeah. I like that. Let's finish off with a couple of questions I ask everyone. So what is the best thing that has happened to you so far today? <laughs> today? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've been having some problems with my thing called hyperacusis where, where your hearing is overly sensitive. And today, I, the first time in over a year, I was with some workers and they were using machinery and it didn't bother me. So that was, that's a really big thing, actually. Cool. <laughs> I like that. What is something you are- You asked. <laughs> <laughs> what is something you are most grateful for? I'm most grateful for the gift of being able to write creative stuff writing and i know i can make movies too that that gift of create of creativity that has been given to me in the last i don't know however many years or whatever wherever it came in that's what i'm most grateful for right now and in life in general but just to be very specific great okay when you have moments in your day that are not going so well how do you pivot out of those what do you do I remember that I, and I first heard it from Eckhart Tolle, this too shall pass. Oh, I like that. So I just, yes. yeah, I just know that at some moment, at some point, this moment that might be difficult, because I do, I was suffering, or I do, I, maybe I don't anymore, I don't know, we'll, know. we'll see, I suffer from serious migraines. And, and I just talk, okay, this is going to go away, you just have to go through this process. And yeah, this too shall pass, that's, that's one and, and knowing that there's some reason that it's happening, whether I can see it or not. Okay, so we just struggled a wee bit with the connection there. Mike, I just want to thank you so much for coming on and being really open and sharing with us the, your thoughts about the way the world is moving, uh, how you think it can be working for the better, and, um, of course, explaining to us about your books. So your first book is My Essential Revolution, which came out two seven, 2017. The Invitation is out now. Is that correct? How can people get hold of that if they're wanting to get hold of that? And in fact, how can they know um, more about you? They can go to my website, which you can put in the show notes if you want. Definitely. Um, MichaelMcGinnis.com. Yeah. Yeah, michaelmcginnis.com has everything on there. You can get the books there um, through Amazon. I've also, the book is, the first book is also on Audible. And if people like that, I'm about ready to create book two on Audible as well. So that's coming. And I'm going to write book yourself? three in December. I voice, it's a multiple narration novel. There's different characters that never yes. na narrate uh, different chapters. And I always narrate one character. Mm -hmm. So do we know which character that is? Can you share with us? In the in the first book, it was a guy named Ronnie who was a, a Mexican gang member and in prison. And in the second book, it's a, a, a bodyguard who was an ex CIA agent named Stan. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> hey, look, I'm going to go check those books out because you've just got me fascinated now, and so I really want to just go and see how this journey starts and finishes, and then carries on in the next book. So, Mike, we've had a few technical difficulties connecting up and that, but I just want to thank you so much for persevering through that and for giving us this time today and for allowing my listeners to hear another perspective and a very valuable perspective. So thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening. I hope you got some real value from this episode. If there's a topic you'd like covered, click on the beautiful side of grief at gmail.com link or 
go into the beautifulsideofgrief.com website where you can also leave a review. To get notified of new episodes, hit the subscribe button. And if you know of somebody who could benefit from this episode, please share, share, share. And until next time, please be kind to you and take good care. Thank <laughs> you.